I'm Jeremiah Hersey, and today we're going to be talking about filter context inside of the Power BI desktop. So we're going to be creating a measure and we're going to look and see how that measure has changed as we add filters and hence the name filter context. So let's take a look at our Power BI desktop. So here I am inside my Power BI desktop and I have this basic table called failed banks. And inside this table, I have bank name, the city, the state, the closing date, the year, and then I combine the city and state into one location to help for mapping purposes for duplicate cities. So if I'm looking at this table that I have failed banks in my data view, so this is the data view, at the very bottom left hand corner, you'll see how many rows are inside of this table. So you can see that there are 563 rows in my failed banks table. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my report view. So that's this one right here, report view. And I'm going to create a measure. So I'm just going to count the rows in my failed banks table, which should be 563. So to create a measure, I'm going to right click on the failed banks table and choose a new measure. So I'll just call this total failed banks. And it's going to equal, we're going to use the count rows function because we're just going to count the rows in the failed banks table, which should be 563. All right. So with measures, you can only see measures inside of visuals. So I'm going to select a matrix. All right, so we have our total failed banks. Notice that the measure is working. We're getting 563. So what filter context is, is that as we add more items inside of our visual, the measure is going to dynamically change to filter down to meet the criteria of whatever we put in it. So for instance, if I were to add a hierarchy to this, so I'm just going to create a hierarchy by right clicking on state. I'm going to create a hierarchy real quick. And then I'm going to add city to that hierarchy as well. So now I have this hierarchy that has city and state. So as I add that to our visual, notice that now it is being filtered down by state. So at this level, we're seeing it filtered down by state. And once again, remember, our total failed banks before we added the hierarchy was 563, exactly what we wanted. But now as we add additional filters, the filter context is being applied and notice at the state level, we now have it broken down by each state. And if I were to go into the next level in our hierarchy, and drill down, notice that it breaks it down into the individual cities as well. So that is filter context. That is what's happening. So notice at the very bottom, I still have 563. So what if I wanted to compare the total failed banks to, let's say, this overall total of 563? Well, notice that in this case, it would be almost impossible to get that number 563 because of filter context. So if I wanted 563 in every single row, it's impossible because the filter context, let me zoom out real quick, applied because there's other filters inside of this visual city and state level so to get 563 we have to override filter context so that brings us to the next measure so to override filter context inside of visuals inside of power bi we have to use the calculate statement so i'm going to right click 
on my failed banks table and choose a new measure. And I'm going to use the calculate savings. So I'm going to call this my grand total banks. All right. Calculate statement. It evaluates an expression in a context modified by filters. So in this case, our filters, our state and our city level is being is modifying that total banks measure that we created because measures are dynamic. So to overwrite this, we have to use the calculate statement. This is a very, very powerful function inside of Power BI. Calculate allows you to override any filter context. So we're going to use the calculate statement. And the best part about creating measures is the ability to call upon them. Remember that our total banks measure in this case returned that number 563. But as we applied filters, the filter context came into play and it now broke it down into individual states and city level. But we can still use that measure. So we're going to use a square bracket to call it to our total failed banks measure. And then we can tell it what filter we want to apply to it. Notice that I get the square brackets right here. That means that this filter is optional. I do not have to uh, apply a filter, but I want to specify what I want it to return. So there's a function called all. So it returns all the rows in the table or the values, ignoring any filters that might be applied. So that's exactly what I want. So I'm going to use all. And then we're going to tell it the table name. So it's going to be our failed banks table. I want you to return everything from our failed banks table. Notice the green parentheses indicating that I have now closed out the calculate statement. And we'll hit enter. Remember that measure values can only be seen inside of a visual. So I'm going to add it to my visual. And so now we have our total 563, overriding that filter context of state and city, exactly what we were looking for. So as we look into using um, different measures inside of visuals, we have to remember that filter context is going to be applied. So any additional filters that we add are going to take shape inside of our visual because our measures are dynamic. That's what they're supposed to do. Well, I hope this helps you understand filter context and how to use the calculate statement to override that filter context inside of Power BI. I'm Jeremiah Hersey. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.